Imagine spending years, even decades of your life, trapped behind bars for a crime you did not commit. The world outside moves on while you're stuck in time, clinging to the last shred of hope for justice. Now imagine that moment, the heartbeat when your innocence is finally recognized and you taste freedom again. Today, we're taking you on an emotional journey through the top 5 reactions of innocent convicts when they were set free. These stories are a testament to human resilience and a stark reminder of the power and sometimes failure of justice. Prepare for a roller coaster of emotions and a few surprises you won't see coming. Can you guess who reclaimed their life with the most shocking reaction? Stay tuned to find out. Stephen Avery Meet Stephen Avery, a poster boy for wrongful convictions and a shining beacon for redemption. Back in 1985, Avery got caught in a nightmare he didn't dream up, being handed a hefty 32-year prison sentence for the rape and attempted murder of a female jogger. But hey, the truth has a funny way of bubbling up to the surface. Fast forward 18 years and boom, the game changer arrives in the form of fresh DNA evidence. Suddenly, the picture becomes clear, Avery was innocent all along. Talk about a plot twist. When the prison gates swing open, Avery's joy could have lit up an entire city, a feeling that his mom was certainly sharing. Long too long ago, too long ago. Oh God, I love you, baby. <laughs> At 43, our guy had finally got a taste of freedom, although things on the home front had changed big time. His wife had handed him divorce papers. His twin sons, just babies when he was locked away, were all grown up now. One can only imagine the thoughts that were going through his mind at this point in time. Imagine being locked up in prison for 18 years for a crime you didn't commit. That's insane. Even after all this, Avery couldn't blame the woman who accused him. He just wanted to start a new life. His interview showed us that he had learned to forgive even after everything he went through. But hold your horses, because the Stephen Avery saga ain't over yet. Fans of the Netflix docuseries Making a Murderer know what I'm talking about. Just two years out of the joint, Avery's back under the spotlight, this time with allegations of another murder. As they say, the truth is stranger than fiction, and in Avery's case, the twists and turns just keep on coming. Ricky Jackson Imagine, if you will, being imprisoned for an agonizing 39 years, stripped of your freedom, paying for a crime you never committed. This is the chilling reality that once faced Ricky Jackson. In May 1975, a gruesome murder took place outside a grocery store. A businessman, brutally beaten, acid thrown in his face, and ultimately shot dead. The apparent perpetrators? Two African-American men. This seemingly open and shut case pivoted on a single, crucial testimony. The courts hung their verdict on the word of a mere 12-year-old boy who claimed to have witnessed the horrifying act in broad daylight. Ricky Jackson? He was an everyman, a man who had never once crossed paths with the law. But as fate would have it, his innocence fell on deaf ears. In 1977, Ricky found himself condemned to death, sentenced for a murder he didn't commit. Fortuitously, his death sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment. Yet, it wasn't until the lone witness, the same boy whose testimony had sealed Jackson's fate, decided to shed light on the truth, finally admitting his fabrication. The boy's confession led to a long overdue liberation. And so, in 2014, after enduring nearly four decades of torment, Ricky Jackson was vindicated. Now, brace yourself for a display of human spirit a testament to resilience as we watch Ricky Jackson's expression the moment he tasted freedom. Extraordinary. I'm very happy. Needless to say, you know, words can't express how I feel right now. Just it's a moment as beautiful as it is bittersweet, filled with an overwhelming sense of quiet relief. And stay tuned, because the following interview will stir your soul. Years of my life, anger, angry, bitter, resentful, hateful of the world. Ricky Jackson doesn't just inspire us with hope, he astounds us with his ability to forgive the very person whose false testimony led him down this harrowing path. Next on our list, Louis Vargas. Meet Louis Vargas, an ordinary man who found himself sentenced to 55 long years to life for a catalog of crimes he didn't commit. 
A resident of sunny Los Angeles, California, Vargas was barely 29 years old when the weight of the unfathomable accusations crashed down upon him. Three horrifying sexual assaults. The police, led by the threat of strikingly similar descriptions, stitched together a theory that these heinous acts were the handiwork of one individual, Vargas, and so, the iron hammer of justice came crashing down. As time mercilessly ticked on, Vargas spent a staggering 16 years confined within the cold walls of his prison cell, 16 years for crimes he did not commit. Until the California Innocence Project, Champions of Justice intervened. They re-examined the case, retested the remaining fragments of physical evidence, scrutinized the victim's clothing, and most crucially, analyzed the DNA. And behold, the results were a revelation. The DNA did not match. Vargas had been telling the truth all along. And with this irrefutable evidence, Vargas's name was cleared. He is in fact innocent because the evidence will show that it undermines the prosecution's case. He did not commit these crimes. When the moment of his exoneration arrived, Vargas remained silent, overwhelmed perhaps or quietly triumphant, yet amidst it all, he held on to one humble desire, a simple wish he shared with his mother for the day he would step out as a free man. Finally, in a bittersweet twist, after enduring a seemingly eternal journey towards justice, Vargas was awarded $886,000 in state compensation a significant amount yet never truly able to compensate for the stolen years of his life. Kirsten Lobato Kirsten Lobato, a native of Nevada, who found herself entangled in a web of unfounded accusations and unjust convictions. In the neon-lit city of Las Vegas, she was unjustly blamed for the chilling assassination of Duran Bailey in 2001. The court's verdict? A daunting 40 to 100 years in prison a verdict that felt like a meteor crashing into her life. But wait, the story doesn't end there. Fresh evidence surged forth like a beacon of hope, leading to a retrial and resulting in reduced charges. The sentence this time? A slightly lesser but still daunting 13 to 45 years. The saga begins in 2001, when an 18-year-old Lobato defended herself against an assault by stabbing her assailant in the groin with her pocket knife cut to July of the same year, when a homeless man's lifeless body was discovered, Lobato was pointed at as the cold-blooded perpetrator. She cried out her innocence, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. The police, seeing only her recent self-defense stabbing, twisted it into a confession for the murder of Duran Bailey. Despite numerous appeals and petitions that kept falling like dominoes, the course of her life changed drastically in December 2017. By then, Lobato had made quite a name for herself thanks to the publication of evidence that undeniably pointed towards her innocence. The tables turned and her release from the Nevada Department of Corrections was ordered. Yet, the claws of justice didn't release her just yet. I'm so overwhelmed and so happy and so grateful for all the people that have believed in me. Another year was added due to an unrelated incident, only for the same judge to release her, citing time served, in January 2019. In total, Lobato spent 16 agonizing years locked away for a crime she didn't commit. Her release, though a breath of fresh air, underscored the harsh reality of our criminal justice system, its cracks, its flaws, and the terrifying ease with which an innocent can find themselves caged. And finally, Kevin Strickland. Take a moment to consider the story of Kevin Strickland, an African-American who found himself cornered by a grave miscarriage of justice. Judged by an all-white jury in 1979, Strickland was held accountable for the devastating loss of three lives in Kansas City. With a life sentence hanging around his neck, he became a prisoner despite the absence of tangible physical evidence linking him to the crime, and despite his only supposed eyewitness recanting her testimony. Yet his path to exoneration would not unfold until 2021, when a chorus of legal voices rallied behind the cause. The Supreme Court slammed the door on his petition, and Missouri's governor shied away from granting him a pardon, citing clouds of uncertainty around his innocence. However, on the fateful day of November 23, 2021, justice finally dawned. Judge James Welsh set Strickland's fate on a new course, overturning his conviction due to unreliable eyewitness accounts 
and unlocking the ironclad doors of his cell. With this, Strickland etched his name into the annals of Missouri's history, embodying the longest confirmed wrongful custody case ever recorded. Transforming tragedy into a beacon of hope, Strickland emerged as a symbol of justice for the wrongfully convicted and a living testament to human resilience. He wants to make it to the ocean. I want to feel the power of the water. I, I, at 62, I believe I can surf. He now pours his energy into advocating for criminal justice reform, striving to light the way for those still gripping with the chains of undeserved captivity. Imagine that moment, after more than four decades of confinement, when Strickland was told of his long-awaited exoneration. The wave of emotions was too overwhelming to control. Tears traced the path down his cheeks, his body trembling with uncontainable joy. His friends and family, who had been the pillars of strength throughout his ordeal, joined in a symphony of jubilant celebration. As word of Strickland's story echoed across the nation, people everywhere rejoiced. Justice had finally been served, pushing back against the towering odds that had stood against him all these years. Alright fams, thanks for taking your precious time to watch my videos. Click on that like button if any of this story has moved you, and subscribe to our channel for more mind-blowing videos like this. Check out the next video on your screen.